You think there's some yetis running around in the forests and jungles by the Himalayans? Uh, no, I think it's some kind of mystery animal. So you you think it's you you don't think it's a yeti, but you think there are other kinds of mysterious animals. Yes. Ah, okay. Mr. Jason, how are you today? I'm very good. You're very good. Oh, fix your collar. Collar there. Oh, it's just on the corner. Corner? Pointy, pointy. The pointy, pointy parts. There you go. Ah, there you go. Cool, 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 cool. Nice shirt. Did you just buy it today? Uh, no. Hmm. Did you get a haircut today? No. Hmm. Did you put some hair gel like I do in your hair? No. No. That's just natural. Yes. Holy macaroni! What a handsome young man you are. Do the girls say you're handsome? What? Do all the girls say you're handsome? No. <laughs> but your mom says you're handsome. Yes. Ah, okay, that's good. That's good, that's good, that's good. All right. So how was your day today? Did you have a good day? Uh, yes. All right. So you're enjoying being back to school. You did your midterms. Everything's good. You're getting great marks. Yes. Okay. Good news. Everything's perfect. All right, buddy. Are you ready for interest 12 speaking test? C-E-F-R-A-2. Yes. Of course you are. Piece of cake. All right, buddy. So we're going we're gonna to go to our part one, just like before. Social interaction. I'm going to talk to you about two topics. Uh, topics that we had and vocabulary we had in the classes. And uh, that's going to get us started. And then we're going we're gonna to review one of our topics that we read about. And that was the strange stories. Remember the Fens Tiger and the Yetis and the Himalayan Mountains and all that stuff? Yes. Okay. So we're going to talk about those as well and see how much you understand. So let's get started. Yeah. Ready to rock and roll? Yes. Okay. Part one, social interaction. Our first topic is going to be about animals. We talked about lots of amazing animals. Do you like animals? Why or why not? Uh, yes, I like animals because animals are cute. <laughs> animals are cute. Do you think crocodiles are cute? No. Do you think snakes are cute? No, no, no. Do you think bears are cute? No. <laughs> Do you think hippopotamuses are cute? Uh, not really. <laughs> not really, yeah. So, what animals, which animals do you think are cute? Like panda, cat, dog, bunny. Bunnies. Mm. Would you like to have a rabbit for a pet? Yes. Yeah? Have you ever had a pet before? Yes. What did you have? Uh, I have. I had a hamster. Had? I had a hamster. Hamsters. Okay. They're cute. Hamsters dangerous? No. No? They, they never threatened you? They never tried to bite your face off? Uh... They already bit, bite, bite me. Bit? They already bit you. Yes. What were What were you doing? Trying to take his food? Yes. <laughs> All right. Would you like to have a dog or a cat? Yes. Okay. Say, Mom, I want a dog. 
Big, big, big dog. <laughs> Number two. What animals do you think are the most amazing? Um, I think... Uh, Mm. Wow, amazing animals. Like giraffes, maybe? Who knows? Which ones do you think are the most amazing? The dog. Dogs? That's what Alien said. Why do you think dogs are so amazing? Because they are cute and they can protect you and your house. Yeah, they make good security for sure. And they're very protective of their families. That's true. But you've never they're had a dog. Too. And what? They are loyal too. They're very loyal, unconditional love. That is true too. Very true. Always happy to see you when you come home. <laughs> yes. But you have never had a dog, right? Yeah. Mm. Someday. Someday you'll have a dog. But you have to take a dog trainer course so you know how to train your dog. Okay. <laughs> okay. Which animal do you think is the most dangerous to people? Um, Not to each other, but to people specifically. Uh, Remember how we talked one time? We were talking about... Uh, Amazing ancient animals. We had the super croc, the megalodon, and we had the uh, the terror bird. But which one was really dangerous to people? That would have probably been the which one? The bird. Yeah, because the bird could be standing outside your front cave door. <laughs> yeah, you could chase you around on the land. I wouldn't worry about a crocodile catching me, and I'm not going to worry about a megalodon because I don't live in the ocean. <laughs> So which ones do you think today are the most dangerous to humans? The bear. The what? Bears. Ah, the bears. Yeah. In some areas, the bears are very dangerous to people. That's for sure. The further north you go, I guess, and the closer you get to the, the grizzly bears and the polar bears... They're, they're pretty dangerous. I think polar bears, they see us as any other food. <laughs> and then they're not nice to people or anybody. I think they eat everything they see. <laughs> not very nice. Not a teddy bear. Yeah. What other animals attack people a lot? I remember we had a conversation once about uh, the animals that kill more people in one year. Remember those animals? No. No, you don't remember. Maybe it was a different maybe it was a different interest class. What other one is dangerous? Name one more. Did you remember uh Bethany Hamilton? Uh, what happened to her? Yeah. Bethany I Hamilton? What, what was it? What happened to her? A shark bit her. <laughs> yeah, bit her arm off. So you think sharks could be dangerous for people? Yes. Would you like to swim with some sharks? No. No, me neither. Maybe in a cage. <laughs> yeah, sharks are dangerous to people. Crocodiles are dangerous to people. Snakes are dangerous to people. Tigers, lions. A lot of animals are dangerous to people, for sure. All right, let's go to topic two. Topic two, we're going to talk about food. Yummy, yummy. Do you like food? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Street food. What type of street food do you like? Sausage. Ah, the sausages. You get the sausages on a stick. And they deep fry them, yeah? Yes. Uh-huh. Anything else you like in street food? Fried chicken. No. Don't eat fried chicken very often? Yeah. Sometimes you do or no, not very often? 
Not very often. Okay. Probably a good thing. I see how they cook a lot of the fried chicken on the streets. Not good for you. Bad batter and bad oil. And can you think of anything else that you like as street food? No. No. That's it. Just sausages. Do you eat sausages every day? No. Of course. No. Okay. That's a good. They're not too good for you. What types of street food would you like to try? Remember, we had a lesson on all the different kinds around Thailand and in the, in South America, Mexico, and all over the place. Mm. What, would, what would you like to try? Grilled chicken. Grilled chicken. That's very popular in Indonesia too. They have these skewers, those sticks like you have that you put the hot dog on or the, your sausage, and then they put chicken and everything on it, and then they barbecue it, they grill it on fire, and then they have a really nice peanut sauce. They're called satay. Um, and you could do satay for chicken, or you could have, I think they had lamb too, and, uh, and pork. Um, and they were really good. They were quite tasty. I, I often bought some of those and brought them home. They're very, very, very popular in, in Indonesia, that's for sure. Can you think of anything else you'd like to try? Mm, noodles. Noodles. Any specific country? Mm, no. <laughs> no, just any other kind of noodles? You like noodles? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Alien said he liked Korean noodles. Spicy Korean noodles was something he liked. Only tried once or twice, but he really liked it. Yeah, what about those tacos and the ones where they cut the meat off the side of the, um, what do they call those, kebabs? And then they, they put them in the breads with the beef and chicken and pork and, and lettuce and tomatoes and chilies and all kinds of different things. Wouldn't you like to try some of that? Yes. Yeah, th I think those would be some of my favorite for sure. Okay. Now, of the street foods that you know of, do you think street food is healthy for most people? Uh, no. No. Which ones do you think are unhealthy and which ones do you think are okay? Uh... I can't think one. I can't think one. You can't think of one of the street food that is one of the street foods that's not healthy. Yeah. Wow. Uh, just if you eat too much, that will be unhealthy. That's true. Too much of one thing is usually not a good thing. But what could you do with the food that would make the food unhealthy? Mm, dirty food? The what? The dirty food? Well, it could be dirty food, but what about the cooking and stuff? What could you do to make it not so healthy and make it fattening or bad for you? Too much oil? Yeah, the oil could be really bad oil when they cook some of the meats and different things. I don't think many of these street vendors use high quality oils to cook your food right it's usually the cheapest 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 thing they can get yeah and uh we had lessons on we had lessons on processed foods do you remember organic food and processed food remember the difference yes yeah so what what makes a food processed food why is it called processed food? Does it come no. out of your garden? No. Where does it come from? Mm. A factory? Yeah, processed foods are made in factories. But they taste really good. Why do they taste so good? Hmm. I do fast for fast food hamburgers and stuff. They taste so good. Why, why, why? Or even some fast food pizzas. 
What is it they do to the food? What do they put in the food? Remember that word? No. No, you can't be saying no all the time in test time, Jason. All right, it's all the chemicals and preservatives that they put in it to make it taste so good and make it look so good and they color it and then they make it look so wonderful and you eat it. It's like, oh, wow, it tastes so good. But it's not very good for you long term. Once in a while is okay, but it's not good for you long term. All right, let's go to our reading review. Are you ready? Yes. All right, so in part two here, we're going to review that lesson seven about the monsters in the Himalayas and uh, monsters in England, <laughs> if there are any. Tigers in England and yetis in the mountains or the forests. So from that reading that we had, that we just reviewed, tell me, is the Fens the name of a city in England? Mm, no. No, what is it? It's a, it's a wet area in the east of England. Yeah, it's a wet area. So, does that mean it's a town, a village, farmland? What do you think? Mm. It's not a city. What do you think? You can see a photo of it. I think it's like farmland, village area. Farms and small villages. Villages, yeah. So it's just a big area with lots of farms and small villages, more than one. It was a big, big area. I've never been there. Have you ever been there? No. Hmm. Do you want to go? No. Don't want to see a tiger? No. Hmm. Okay. All right. So we talked about um, William Rooker. I saw his famous, his famous picture on the internet uh, and the picture of this blurry cat crossing the street in a field. Uh, it wasn't a video. It was just a picture that I saw. Who saw the Fen Tiger first? Mm, not William Rooker. Not William Rooker. Does it say who? No. Yeah, it doesn't say. It just said that he was the first to photo it and film it. But he wasn't the first to see it. Other people said that the tiger had lived there before. That's right. So you think it's possible that the, there's a tiger living in the wild in England? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. What do you think it eats? A tiger? Hmm. What would a tiger eat in England? Uh, eat animals. What kind of animals? Every kind of animal. <laughs> Every kind of animal. <laughs> yeah, if there was a fen tiger there, then they'd he'd probably be eating farm animals. Now, I'm sure if there was a tiger there, they would have found him by now. <laughs> Did Joan Peacock... Joan, a woman. Joan Peacock, see the Fen Tiger? Uh, no. No? So why is she in this story? What happened with her? She found the footprint in the photo in her garden. Hmm, that's what it says in the story. She found a footprint in a photo of her garden, yeah? Which kind of sounds strange footprint in the photo in her garden see to me i would think she found the footprint took a photo from the garden but she, here it says in the photo that's kind of strange hmm. so what made her think there was something in her garden why did she go and take photos of the garden her dog was barking in the night yeah, and dogs do that, right? They're so protective. Often, if someone or something is walking around in the yard, they have very good ears. And maybe they can smell. 
and uh, they'll often bark to kind of alert you and say, hey, something's going on out there. Let me out. I want to go attack something. Who was Eric Sherpa? Who's that? Is he a sailor? Is he related to Eric Shackleton? Uh. Who was he? Who was he? Was he a politician? No. A footballer? No. What was he? Uh, climber. Yeah, he was a climber. But more importantly, he was uh, an... Mm. A British... British... Explorer? Explorer, yeah. So, he was in the Himalayas. Who was Eric Shipton climbing with? Uh, the Sherpas. The Sherpas and? And uh, climbers. And other climbers, yeah. What's a Sherpa? Uh, like the... Uh, the people who live there. Yeah, the locals, people who live there. But what do Sherpas do? Sherpas help climbers. Yeah, they're like guides and they help. They they know the mountains. They know the trails. They usually help with the gear for carrying things. Yeah, they know, they know about the dangers. So it's safer if you go climbing with some of the local Sherpas. Yeah. So they found some footprints that were a bit strange. How big were the footprints? The footprints were 33 centimeters long and 20 centimeters wide. Mm, wow. 20 centimeters wide. So that means they were like, this is 15 centimeters. That's wider than my head, 15 centimeters. So it would be like, like here to here and another five centimeters. So it would be the footprints, only the footprints would be like this big. That's how wide the foot was. Do you know anybody with feet that wide? No. Holy macaroni. What do you think it was? Nothing. A black bear. You think a bear has foot feet this wide? A very <laughs> big black bear. It have to be a very. It have to be like a polar bear to have feet that big. I think. I don't, don't. They don't have any polar bears in in the Himalayas. Hmm. That's pretty big. They thought it was a sh a yeti. And the, the Sherpas said they knew what it was. And the Sherpas told them told them about the Yetis. Where do the Yetis normally live? The Yeti live in the forests and yeah. Yeah, normally Yeti in the forests. You can see in the picture in your book, right? Remember how we had that lesson and we talked about how you have the valleys and then you start going up the foothills and up the mountains and then the trees stop growing at a certain level. And then after that, we go into more rocks and then the snow, yeah, with the really high points. Like there's no trees on top of Mount Everest and those tall mountains. Do you remember why? <sighs> Because it's too cold. Hmm. But then there would be no trees in Canada or no trees in Russia and Siberia if it was because it's too cold. It's not about the temperature. It's about what? Uh, so. When you look at the mountain range, you can almost see like a tree line. It's almost all the same height. I mean, the trees grow up the side of the mountains and then it all stops. You can see in the picture here. You see the lower hills. They all have trees on top. But once they get higher, no more trees. 
Why, why does it change? What's different? Yes, it is colder when you go up, but that's not the reason there's no trees growing. Is it topographic? The who? The what? The what? The topographic? The topographic. <laughs> no, it's about the air. Remember what's different with the air when you go up a mountain, especially a really high mountain? There will be less oxygen. That's right, less oxygen. That's why the climbers have to carry tanks of oxygen with them to balance because the air gets really thin when you go really high like that. And harder to breathe. And there's not enough oxygen in the air for the trees to grow and be nice and big. To grow big. Yeah. What do you think? You think there's some yetis running around in the forests and jungles by the Himalayans? Uh, no, I think it's some kind of mystery animal. So you you think it's you you don't think it's a yeti, but you think there are other kinds of mysterious animals. Yes. Ah, okay. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Would you like to meet a yeti? Uh, yeah, but uh. Only if the Yeti won't attack me. Only if he won't attack you. So you'd like to have a cup of tea and a couple of cookies with him? Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. As long as he doesn't attack or eat you. Yes. That's a good idea. I agree. <laughs> All right, Jason, you did very well. You keep improving. You're still very young. You're only 10, right? I'm 11. 11 now. That's right. You and Lily are both 11 now. Sheesh, it's been a while. But we're getting there. We're getting there. We're going to go to Interest 13 next week. We're going to keep improving, keep improving, and you will be a fluent speaker in a few more years. But it takes time, yeah? Little by little by little by little. So you just have to keep practicing. You get good at something if you do it a lot and you do it for a long time. Then you have no choice. You will get good at that skill. So no worries. Again, you're doing good, buddy. So I'll see you next week. Okay. Okay. Good night, Jason.